A huge welcome to the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas. It's the final of the Predator World 10 Ball Championships. We started with 128 players. We are down to just two. By the end of this match, we will know who will be crowned the 2022 champion and pick up that check for $60,000. It's 10 ball, it's alternate break, race to 10, call cool shot, and calling the shots with me in the booth. It's the birthday boy, Tony Robles. Great to be back, Mark. And uh, wow, to see new young blood in the finals of a major tournament like this, and to know that one of them is gonna be crowned world champion for the first time in the careers, which is obviously gonna change your life, is, is amazing to watch. Yeah, and those two players, of course, the man who just broke off, Wojtek Szewczyk from Poland, and he's playing against, well, what a sensation he's been over the last couple of tournaments, Christopher Tevez from Peru. And what a match we have for you here. He's made a ball on the break, calls the one in the corner. Describe the action for us, Tony. This is absolutely electric in this atmosphere. Oh yeah, the place is completely crowded. Uh, I expect a very close match, simply because Mr. Tevez, Christopher, broke so well against Jason, and Wojciech has broken just about perfect in the entire event, which is why he's also here. So I think here he's gonna try to go two rails past the five or underneath it. I think he's gonna go past it with a spin. Okay, underneath it. Oh, but wow. Oh, he's missed it. Yeah. Now then, if you haven't seen this guy play, here's your chance. I'm sure you've been with us all day, guys. Hopefully so. Because if you haven't, you've missed some great, great ball. You know, I, if he can hit this ball dead full and go two rails and hit the left side of the nine, that nine is going to go right towards the three and the seven if he stops the cue ball there. Oh, he can't even hit it that full. Look, he's going to go two rails. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he wanted to hit that dead oh, square. Oh, and that's the danger of that shot. It's always a danger, the scratch in that pocket when you come off the back of it. Well, it's stayed up, Tony. The good thing for Wojciech here is that all he has to do is just hit it with follow. It's not like he has to put major spin on it or anything. Just hit it with straight follow. Send the cue ball anywhere near that spot or just anywhere on that side of the table. Yeah, I mentioned in his semi-final time how loosely he grips the cue. Beautiful shot. That's not easy from in the jaws of the corner pocket. Wow. Hit it with perfect speed. Yeah, here he's just gonna go one cushion, play the three in the side, slight angle. I think he wants a little more angle than that, but he's fine here. In the Las Vegas Open, just before this tournament, another pole was in the final and he won it. Viktor Zelensky took that crown. Yeah, and that would make it uh, two Polish players in a row if he wins this one. Early stages, of course. Now I'm going to do the first half of this final and then we're going to get George Teachea back in. Look at those eyes, eyes on the prize. Oh yeah. No, both players want this one really badly. Yeah, huge prize fund of course, Tony. Qu over quarter of a million, 266,000 I think it was. 60 to the winner and even the runner up gets 40. Losing semi-finalist got 20. And that's bigger than most prizes in yeah. pool. I was going to say, 40,000 is bigger than, than most major tournaments. Yeah. The US Open play, paid uh, 40,000 for many years, the first, you know? So this is pretty, pretty awesome. Pool's on its way back, Tony. Oh, it's going to be bigger than it ever, it's ever been, in my opinion. And I want to thank everyone that has tuned in from all over the world and shown uh, love and support for this these past two weeks with these two events. Not just the ones that are in here now, but everyone that's just tuned in. Uh, because as I said before, this is even this is going to get even bigger. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, we've actually been streaming on Facebook as well today. We're on three platforms at least. 
and we're trying to bring this game into the homes of people that might not normally see it you know we want people to stumble across it have a look at stars like this and say wow i want to get into this this is exciting yeah. Yeah. and then it goes so first blood to the man from poland Wojtek shevchek now i asked george this earlier on tony you've been here you played in both events What's the standout highlight for you? <laughs> it's funny you ask me that. I was literally about to ask you the same thing. My highlight of the event was watching Jose Perico come back out of nowhere and just play again because I'm, I, I, I know I'm good friends with Perico. I've known him since the 90s, early 90s when I played full-time in pro. And I just didn't hear from him for years. I was worried about him. Uh, I kept asking people in California, have you seen Jose? No one's seen him. And boom, out of nowhere, he just popped up. And he's playing well. Well, that was George's yeah. favourite moment as well, commentating on Oscar Dominguez and Jose Barriga. How about yourself? I'm going to tell you during the next break. Let's concentrate on this break. <laughs> and it's uh, Christopher Tevez breaking off. And he's been breaking like a, he broke like a monster against Jason Shaw. Let's see if that six ball goes straight in the side. Almost did. Four ball almost did, but that four railer goes four in consistently go in. too. Yeah. It's been going in consistently. Yeah. He made that as well as making the w the wing ball in the side on numerous occasions, Tony. He actually made four balls on one break. Yeah, I saw that. Were you watching? Of course. How did George and I sound? Are we all right? I went to my room to start packing up because I leave tomorrow. And I wanted to make sure that I knew when the match ended so I, I get here in time for the final. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long wait. We're sorry, guys. The tournament has overrun. There's been some really close matches earlier on today. Lots went to Hill Hill, and that's why we're about two hours late with our final. But you don't mind waiting when you've got class. To it's going to slide it over by the five. How good did he hit that, Mark? Yeah, I'll tell you, I've said it so many times in the semi final. His stroke is just beautiful one of my you know he's a great player to watch i love watching fedor and i liken him to fedor with his stroke i can see a similarity there yeah i could definitely see a similarity Ooh. well he jumped up a little bit there yeah thought he was falling over tony <laughs> <laughs> i think he's going to settle for the combination here i don't think the six goes past the eight he doesn't exactly have an angle to play the six in the top hand pocket so unless he decides to hit it with speed and play the six in the same pocket as the five ball because if you overhit it that way, now he's going to go for the combo. Very nice. He really does move the cue ball around nicely. And he's got a really nice tempo about him, Tony, as well. This could go all the way, you know, this one. As I predicted, I think this is going to be a close match. Yeah, Wojtek, look, just look at his eyes when the camera goes to him. Just watch his eyes, just focused 100% on the task. You'll have to scrape him off the table, <laughs> yeah. I can tell you. One well, the thing with uh, Christopher, too, is that neither Wojtek or, or Christopher are intimidated by anyone, which, which is what makes it such an exciting final. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't intimidated by Jason Shaw either. Not even in the slightest bit. No. So, perfect on the 10. Once again, it's going to be level one rack each. Race to 10, of course. So, here's your birthday today. It's just lighten the mood slightly. What was the highlight of your birthday? I know what my highlight of your birthday <laughs> was. Um, Come just on, be, just being able to spend it with friends, and you know, Thorsten surprised me with a birthday cake. He called my wife to ask her what do I like, and she said mangoes and caramel. So he bought me a mango and caramel <laughs> cake. Was There's a bit awesome. of creme brulee going on there <laughs> yeah. as well, apparently. So Alison Fisher stopped by to eat some cake. Jasmine Ocean had some cake. You had some cake. Everyone in the staff had some cake. It was awesome. It was pretty cool. And we had a really great photo session as well. Now, I want you to send me a couple of those photos after this final because I want to start sharing them around mm -hmm. on my social media as well. I was pleased to be a part of your birthday. No, thank you, bud. And I have still got a surprise for you. But you may not get it till tomorrow, Tony. Okay. 
you can have two birthdays. <laughs> Wojtek breaking off. Let's see his break now then, Tony. Let's have a look and tell us what you think. Bro, he's, break, he's broken the balls like a monster this entire tournament, but I just, I don't know, for whatever reason, there you go. I, I feel like when Christopher breaks, he puts more upper body strength into it. I think he gets that extra, you know, however many miles per hour when he's breaking the balls, and I think that that's made a difference in, in, in you know, the, the match that he's won. Yeah, it'd be interesting to have a speed gun on the on the break, wouldn't it? Just to see, you know, who's breaking at what. Yeah, just having a little rethink here. Is he thinking of running off the side of the eight ball, Tony, with the cue ball up for the two? I think he can hit it with enough inside spin to avoid it. And even if he hits the edge of it, he's fine. Yeah. Because he would hit very little of it. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing he should be concerned about is if he hits it and taps it very lightly and it stops in front of the three, then, you know, would he have an easy combination or not? Then would that mean that he has to shoot the three in the side off the six? I don't know. It all depends on what happens here. Yeah, just they just catch that eight yeah, ball. I don't think he wanted to come down there that far or that far. Um, here he's gonna have. I, I don't think he can bank it here. I don't think he's gonna want to shoot the two six combination. I think he has to play safe here. The question is, can he get the two past the six? Maybe. You know, he has to get the cube one back to, on the side of the table that he's shooting from now. He can also bank the two ball and slide. You know, draw the cube ball underneath the nine, or put him behind the eight. But he has to hit that one pretty good. Yeah, this is looking okay if he gets a big bounce off this rail up behind the eight. Well, he's left an edge. This will cut to the bottom right-hand corner. I think he's going to try to leave him behind the four and the ten here. Nope. We played that with loads of English. I'm, I know. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't inside, hit it. I'm surprised he didn't hand. hit it thin and try to go two, three rails and then yeah. the four and the ten because a two would hit the, the the long rail after hitting the bottom rail and go towards the nine. I think he just lost the the line with all that English he was putting on. I mean, you never know, Mark. Maybe he tried to hit it a little on the fuller side and bank it past the nine in front of the five and the seven, and, but, but it didn't seem like he had enough speed to do that anyway. Mm -hmm. Another chance then. Young man who slid under the radar, certainly for us who don't really know too much about him but i did have a word with jason shaw and he's heard about him he knew him mm -hmm. never heard of him in my life until this tournament i think we're going to be hearing a lot more of him oh no doubt about it also peruvian three cushion champion latin america i think it was very popular game in peru and in latin america mm -hmm. in general that's why most of the current players here are from there and you know that that's why it doesn't surprise me that he kicks and plays safe very well. Seems a very nice kid as well. I say kid, I think he's 31. Still a kid compared to me. Wojtek, 27. moving that cue ball around so easily. It really is pretty to watch. You can tell he's used to um, he's used to playing under pressure a lot. You can you can definitely tell. Yeah, nothing's phasing him. His first world final. And we'll be back after this.
Welcome back to a packed house here in Las Vegas. We're at the Rio All Suites Hotel Casino. Christopher Tevez breaking off 2-1 ahead. Let's have a look at this amazing break, which has helped in a big way to get him here. Well, he didn't hit that one so good, Tony. He came across it, but he still, he still made, made that a ball. Four -railer, but he still made the four-railer. He's consistently making that four-railer. Yeah. That's probably the worst I've seen him hit a break <laughs> in a long while. Obviously not a bad break, but, you know, he just hit, didn't hit it perfect. So cast your expert eye around, Tony. What do you see? He just needs to stay still, perfectly still, to make this ball. And he's really he's a good straight shooter, you know that? It's just it's very impressive how, how, like you said, it's almost like gorse light. Yeah. You know? He just seems to hold on to that cue ball with the tip of the cue that little bit longer, you know, really gets through it and pushes it through. Look, gets so much action on the cue ball with very little effort because he's accelerating through the ball every single time. Yeah. Perfect shot of it here. Oh, he's, that's gone wrong. He can bank this, though. You'd only be surprised if he draws three rails or two rails for the five if he decides to bank it. Or maybe go behind the nine ball, will he? Maybe he's banking it. He's banking it. No, oh, he is going behind the nine. Yeah. Yep. Well, he definitely misjudged that one, but at least he hit it with the proper speed of putting behind the ten. Yeah, now has he got the faintest of edges here? I think he has, you know. He might be able to get him up behind the nine himself here, Tony, if he can catch this fine enough. Or he can come off the bottom rail and put him behind the 10. It all depends which one he feels more comfortable with. Kind of like coming behind it. But I think he's going to go for the thin hit. Yeah. Don't be surprised if this ends up glued to the back of that nine ball. You know, he has not just a nine, but the six is a potential blocker, too. Another shot you've got to keep your head dead still on. Any little movement will transfer oh, he to hit. the cue ball. Oh, he's oh, caught it much wow. too thick. Oh, well, yeah. He Didn't cue it thick. nice, Tony. He's a little bit of a jab, a little bit of a snatch. This is following the same kind of pattern as the semi-final with Jason Shaw did. Pinpoint accuracy once it came with a position. Yep. Very impressed with him, Tony. It's like I said, like I'm 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 in shock, but I'm happy for the guy. You know, I mean the reason I'm saying I'm in shock is because I never heard of him. It just came out of nowhere. And, you know, I know most of the players. I'm friends with all the players, actually, but never heard of him. But I have to say that this, I'm extremely impressed with not just his game, but his discipline, his composure, and the fact that he's fearless. Yeah, he's got a great attitude as well. priceless the reaction on his face two balls out from winning the semi-final when he knew he was there he looked up to the to the sky Beautiful control. And he's in total control. So this 10 ball, in it goes. Increases the lead to 3 1 now, Tony. So you got one eye on the chat, Tony. What's going on? What are people saying? Are they enjoying this world 10 ball final? He's got a lot of support from. There's a couple of Spaniards there. Sorry to inter interrupt you. Look, there's Honor Salto coming out next to him. Frances Ruiz. Now, that guy sat next to them, came up to me the first day 
when we were putting chair covers on and he introduced himself, I believe he the lives here. Right. Yeah, the one on the right. Do you mm -hmm. know him? Yeah, I know him very he well. He knows you very well oh, as yeah. well. He's known me since I'm a teenager. Yeah, he used to come to my dad's pool room when I was growing up. Yeah. He learned how to play the game. His name is Alberto Fuentes. Yeah. Music producer, too. He lives in Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Wow. Here we go, then. Wojtek. Maybe he can produce your raps, yo. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his eyes flicking from cue ball to object ball. They'll fix on the object ball now. And then launches that cue ball towards that one ball for Rayleigh. He makes as well. Shot on the one, Tony. Mm -hmm. This is a good opportunity. Made the 10. That will be respotted. No early 10s, of course, guys. Cool shot. Three foul rule is in effect. 30 second shot clock. One extension per rack each. So he's going to come off the top rail, bottom rail, go past the 10 slightly, and hopefully even get straight on the two ball. There's referee Michaela Tapp making sure there's no funny business going on with the clothing touching the balls. All ball fouls also, and we are playing the feet three foul rule. Oh, he's caught the 10 ball. Well, look at that. That's ruined the, the seven now. Created a bit, bit of a cluster there. Who knows? After he pockets a six, he might hit the seven of the nine and use it as a stopper and send the cue ball to the other side. But even if, even if he did do that, he leaves him a pretty, pretty easy kick. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. We'll be there very soon five ball and then the position he leaves himself on the six is all important Tony yes yes because I mean he can make a decision as to whether or not he's going to decide to take a risk by breaking them or playing a safe but if I had to choose I would pick the safe all day so where are you looking to put the cue ball here Tony for the six if he if he wants to break it, he needs to leave it by that. Uh, well, you probably can you see that white spot where they break from? I can. The tables. Yeah. Right before that, to the right of that. I still think the move here is to play safe, but I have no idea if he's going to play safe or go for the breakout. See right there by the white spot, a little short of it, but that's even better. Oh, he's got a nice angle on this. Now he can draw down into it. He's looking at it off the side rail. Just before the side pocket with some left hand English. See, if he would have had a slightly fuller hit, a slightly, see, so to where he can hit lower. Mm -hmm. If he hits a 10 and can get the cube water there, he can pocket the seven or just get it to go near the pocket. If he hits a nine, the nine will come off the 10 and hit the seven also towards the pocket. Here we but go I don't know if he's going to attack it shot. from that angle or if he's going to attack it from the other angle. He's going to go no, the other way. He's come into it two rails. Well, he's hit it, mm -hmm. but he's still got that safety you were talking about, Tony. Yeah, over here, I think the key here, well, I don't even think he can do it now. I don't know if he can hit this thin enough to put it behind the eight. But he definitely wants to put it on that side of the, the ten ball to take away any possible kick from that side, from the left side. What a great seven. camera view that is. Look, oh, he's mm. missed it altogether, has he? Yes, he has. Yeah, and do you know what? Exactly the same happened in the semi-final. It was actually Eklund Kachi it happened to. He played a similar shot where he missed the ball completely, where he was trying to catch it really thin. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna, well, Is he going to go for the run out here? I think he is. I mean, you know... I won't be surprised if he tries to come off the 10, because if he comes off the 10, he's going to go towards the center of the table. Well, not not, not, not that way. This way, he's going to come backwards. 
But it yeah. like he was considering like coming off the 10. Yeah. yeah. It's safer. It's safer because the 10 is close enough to the side where you can play either a combo on the 10 or the 9 in the corner. He just needs to make sure that he hits her enough to get on, on the opposite side of the 10. I mean, the 8 ball. Yeah, he hasn't. So he's going to have to yeah. go all the way around here. He's got a slight angle. Left hand English to swing it round. Four rails. Wow, he drew it. <laughs> What a shot that is. Yeah. Wow, that's a great shot. Requires a lot of control. You hit that really, really well. Like I said, I'm extremely impressed with this kid. Yeah, he's feeling this, mm. isn't he? And he's loving it. He's enjoying he's, it almost. He's going to be too happy with that. I think he'll still slice it in, but it's definitely not where he wanted to end up. I don't want to use the word showboating, but he certainly looks very confident. Oh, he's overdone it. Oh. He's overdone it. Wow, shock. Oh, should have been 4 1. It's definitely going to be. Do you see him moving a bit there? He was choking the ball. He moved a bit. So we're going to go for a quick break after this 10 ball goes in. Don't go anywhere. This is turning into a thriller. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the final of the 2022 Predator World 10 Ball Championships. We're in Las Vegas. I'm not a gambling man, and if I was, well, I certainly wouldn't be gambling on who might win this title because you can't separate them, really. Tevez breaking off. There goes the wing ball in the side, Tony. Another, was it the nine ball went in the... It's Call very up. unfortunate that the he made ball. three balls on the break and, and wound up there. So explain what he's doing right with this break. Why is he making so many balls, Tony? I think he's hitting the cue ball with almost no spin and hitting that, that so perfectly dead center. See, what people don't understand is when you hit the ball to the side, you're going to create a bit of deflection. Even if it's a little bit of spin, you're hitting the ball so hard. And when you create that deflection, you fail to hit that ball dead square, you're not going to get as much action because people understand when you hit the side of the rack, you're focusing all the, or transferring all the energy to the side of the rack. When you hit it dead square, you're f literally transferring that energy to the core of the rack right at the center, which creates more, uh, more effective spread. So a 
push out and for attack with this shot at the two playing a simple safety keep it simple well i mean uh, i don't know i mean if he leaves a, a jump shot he can he leaves a, the the 210 billiard but i don't think he had much of a choice there well he's going for the jump stick here it comes it's an air rush and we've seen how effective these have been this week. You asked me what was my favourite moment. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a couple. The young Finn Riku Rompanen, Eric Roberts, another great youngster from the US. And of course, that now world famous double jump by Jesus Atencio. Yeah, it was a great jump. It really was. It's very impressive. Gonna have to ask him to show me that shot because I've never tried it before. And we both have the same jump cue. Now, is he going for this or is it another safety? I think he's gonna leave the cube underneath the six. He's a three cushion player. If he hits this hard enough, well, I just. Two might not be close enough. That's about where he wants to leave. But you would have to hit this really hard in order to even straighten out that cue ball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's too far away from the cushion for him to even consider making a billiard with the 10. You know, the side pocket, if he, there's always a chance he can go off the 7. He might even come off the back of the 2 here and make the 10 as well. That's a, a well-known scratch, isn't it, off of that when you're playing the... Oh, he's gone the other way. Oh, look at this. What a shot that is. I thought he was going the other way. Oh, has it come out? Looks like it did, Mark. Well, we're right. You're right behind that, Tony, on the line. Can you look down there and see if he can get through? I think he can. Oh yeah, he can definitely make this. with nice control as well. It was not an easy shot to shoot at that speed, trust me. Especially, uh, uh, you know, under this kind of pressure. I know you were raffling off a couple of cues earlier on, Tony, with the guys from Poland. Now, mm -hmm. did I did I win it? No, I didn't, because I didn't buy any tickets. <laughs> Who a won it? A, a gentleman by the name of Alex Trujillo won it. He bought uh, five tickets for 20 bucks. We did the draw. Jessica Fry back from the Predator booth, uh, you know, mm -hmm. picked the winning ticket. And we did it here, the main arena. I had the microphone. The entire room could hear it, so it was pretty cool. I, th I thought I heard you on the microphone. That was you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was me. I thought it was. I thought, hello, just because he's not in the commentary booth, he still needs a microphone. He's gone somewhere else to find one. <laughs> Could be going three all here, guys. And we'll have another final for you tomorrow on this very table. It's the Alpha Women's Las Vegas Open. Some big names in that. Kelly Fisher, Brittany Bryan, Jasmine Ocean, Jennifer Beretta. Alison Fisher. Great player from Austria as well, Primus. And it goes. So you've had six racks, Tony. What's your impression so far? Well, I mean, he had an, he, he had an opportunity to make it 4-2 in that. 10 cost him, you know, that lead. And now we have, I told you, as I predicted from the beginning, it's going to be a very close match. And so far, so so good when it comes to that. But again, let me uh, take the time to thank everyone involved in making this event happen because there are many unsung heroes, names that you never hear of, that work behind the scenes, work extremely hard to make everything possible. You know, from just table setups to the, the the stands to the tables i mean the, the amount of work that goes into putting something like this together 
is unprecedented. I mean, people have no clue the amount of work that it takes. So I, I think that, uh, you know, it's very important to make sure that each and every single person, individual that's involved this deserves a very big thank you. Yeah, it's like a, a huge team of ants. They're like synchronized swimmers all coming together. Sometimes you feel you're sinking and then all of a sudden your finished arena and finished room gives you that extra breath you need. And if you get a chance, try to check out the, the content that Omar Dali, who's here for the first time, he's the creator content that Predator hired. Great work. Great work. You have to check it out. Omar has done a tremendous job. Good kid with a good head on his shoulders. And uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure meeting him. So uh, he's, he's, he's going to do good things for Predator and, and for CSI in general. Very, he's very happy to have him on board on the team. Yeah, well said, Tony. The future is very bright for Paul. And with the gentlemen such as yourself and uh, George doing commentary, my lord, can't go wrong. Well, you're a huge part of that, of course. See, look at the long backswing that he has. Seems to do it with such ease. Well, you know, he always has that delay at the back of at the back swing, which is something that Federer is very good at as well. And all the top players, you know, who play good. Ooh. Oh, as soon as I said that. <laughs> yeah, so that's. I think uh, he may have got a skid, you know. Now, very interesting. Jason Shaw had the cue ball cleaned a few times when he was playing him. Now, I know that Christopher is using just a, you know, just a standard master chalk. Is that, does it leave marks on the ball, on the cue ball? The standard master chalk? Yeah. Not really, no. I think the ones, that the old chalks, uh, I don't remember which one it was. I, I had... One of the pros come to my house in Long Island a couple of years ago, stayed a couple of days, and uh, we exchange ideas about fundamentals and stuff like that, and use a piece of chalk that left, every time he struck the cue ball, it left a big blob of chalk on the table, and it was like impossible to remove. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Wow. I said, I love you, buddy, but I don't think you're gonna be using that chalk on my table anymore. <laughs> so supposedly they've gotten really, really good to the point where you can't mark the table if you tried with the chalk. You rarely see chalk on a table now, do you? Yeah. Very nice chalk there on the five ball by Wojciech. Well, you know, I don't have favorites, but these are two guys that have never won anything this big. So either one that wins it, it's going to be huge for them. And I'm happy for both of them, whoever wins it. And you know how hard it is to make it to the final of an event of this magnitude. Yeah, 128. We had 64 last year, 128 this year. Yeah. Because I was talking to uh, Victor Zelensky about an hour ago, and we spoke about for 20 minutes, and uh, we were talking about, and we both agreed, <laughs> to win these big tournaments, you not only have to play well, break well, but you have to get rolls when you need them. You have to have the balls, you know, when you break, you have to have the rolls, you know, going your favor that you can make five balls on the break and end up frozen behind the ball. Yeah, I was Scratch. talking to Darren Appleton and he said it's been such a long, grueling day. There was not even time to eat in between because it's so busy and games were going on so long that they were stacking up. And that's why we're running late now, a couple of hours behind. This 10 ball then, we're going to go for a very short break. Don't miss any of this final. We're coming back.
Welcome back, pool fans all around the world. And it is the world. It's the Predator World 10 Ball Championships final. Shesha leading 4-3. Look how squarely he hits that ball. You see that? And you know another thing that people don't realize? When you break the balls, there's a big difference between having that cue ball jump as you reach a one ball or having it stay on the playing surface that reaches one ball. Because when it's jumping up and it's going yeah. at an upward angle, you're transferring part of that energy up in the air. And Not the other, full in the face. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that also makes a massive difference in making balls on the break. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, somebody appreciated that shot. That was very well played, actually, wasn't it? Yeah. Can he hold it, Tony? Is he going to go twice across? I don't I, You know, I twice. think he's going to go twice. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like hitting it soft here. This is rack number eight. But getting back to what I said earlier about the break, the same applies to jump shots. Do you? Th why do you think that when people shoot jump shots, they overcut the ball a lot? Because they overhit it, and the ball's actually in the air when it hits the object ball. So if it's in the air when it strikes the object ball, as opposed to hitting the actual spot they're aiming for, you're going to end up overcutting it. I because you're hitting less of it. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I, I, I learned that from Sean Putnam, who at one point in time was the best, considered the best jumper in the country. Interesting. Food for thought. I can't wait. When I get to Thailand, I'm going to start playing again, Tony, and I'm going to come back here a 600 far go. <laughs> well, you know, I love teaching. You know that we spoke earlier about me doing the clinic in Texas at uh, Skinny Bob's and Betsy's on Sunday, May 22nd, and I'm joining forces with Predator to start a pool clinic around the country. So anyone interested, please feel free to reach out. You can also go to TonyRobles.com and reach me that way as well. I'm looking forward to doing this and joining Forces for Predator. And maybe even working with the juniors at some point too. Yeah, that would be great. That would be fantastic. Don't forget I need to hook you up with Steph Goodwin. Steph and Ice Goodwin, two great people doing lots Ooh, for the junior guys. Yeah, I, I introduced myself to them. I recognize them because I saw the video that you recommended. Oh, watched, brilliant. So, so you spoke I knew, to them? I, I knew what they looked like. So I saw them and I introduced myself. The ball collectors and the signature collectors. Yeah. Surprise miss there. Surprise miss there. They actually bought nine sets of balls with them. And they got another nine sets at home. <laughs> and they've got all of them. Signed, lovely couple. They love their ball, and I hope you signed a ball for them. I did, I did. Like you said, they're a very lovely couple. Did you sign it, Mark White? <laughs> <laughs> so you know why I'm laughing when you said that? Not because of what you said with your name. I remember one time they asked Mika and I to sign something at the same time, and Mika was signing it. As soon as Mika signed it, I went to sign it, but I saw Mika's name and started signing Mika. <laughs> Instead of Tony. Mika Robles. Oh, yeah. he's overhit this. Oh, and it's shots like mm. that that change matches. If you end on the wrong patch, it could lose you the match. You think he can see enough to put him underneath the nine? I think he can. I think that's what he's Just playing, Tony. to make sure that he gets that eight ball out of the way to give the cue ball room to go right past it. Yep. There you go. <laughs> and he hit that like a dream. Well oh, don't go in there. He hit that, okay. that great. He hit that great. I'm wondering if the point actually got in the way. If the point got in the way, he can't even jump past the nine if he if he wanted to jump, that is. Would you consider jumping this? I mean... It, oh, to jump past the nine. To, past the nine. Yeah. You know, he's going to go one real. He already called it in the corner. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a tough kick. He's called it. Can he make it? Well, he's looking pretty good. How good did he hit that? Uh, brilliant shot. <laughs> the crowd loving it, aren't they? Oh, 
guys, I wish you could see what I can see. It's just a sea of people. And there's also the two big screens that are showing it. And there's crowds outside the arena watching it as well. Oh, if he can see this, he's definitely going to go for the corner. Yeah, he'll be coming back towards the nine, won't he? It's there, it's there, it's there. Wow. What wow. a shot. So it's going to be a two-rack lead for the man from Poland, if he can just make these last two balls. Dead silence around. Oh, very nice. The table. That great speed. Oh, it's too hard, is it? No, I don't oh, think so. It's pulling I up perfect. So. Look at that. I think he might was a little bit worried it was going to run a little bit further, but pulled up just in time. In it goes. So our first two game. Gap, Tony. Yeah, he hung the 10 ball a couple of racks ago and then there, unfortunately, made an error there. And uh, So throughout, throughout this last few days, Tony, we've been doing something called Tony's Tips. So can you give us a different tip? What about attitude around the table? You know, your, the, your approach to playing the game. You know... Uh, when I was learning the game and I was building up experience, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't win a tournament in the beginning. And I, you know, kept playing, whatever, thought about it a lot. And, you know, I noticed that I would always get very angry, but kept it to myself to the point where it destroyed my game. When I learned how to manage my emotions, that's when I started winning tournaments. And believe it or not, managing my emotions was actually tougher to learn than any shot I ever had to master on the, on the table. Yeah, very interesting. They say a huge part of the game is in the head. And if you can master that, just You'll play again. Ahead. Yes, there we go. Well, where's that cue ball going? It's okay. He's made at least two balls, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure if that one goes past the six. But if it does, you might see him go for it. If not, he might it, play a, a safe. It goes in this other corner, Tony, hmm. if he wants yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. It all and he can stun off the side round back over for the for the three. Two's already down. Well, how does he feel? If he fancies it, he'll go for it. He has got an easy safety, though, if he prefers... A lot of the times, Mark, it all depends on how you feel. If you're feeling it like that, you know. Yeah, he's coming he, safe, he might, Tony. He might shoot it to the three ball and put him behind the nine. I yeah. don't know. If he has the angle to do that, why not? That's what he's playing. Play, play the percentages. Yeah. Well, oh, he hasn't yeah. got it. Now, does this one ball pass the four is the question. And if he makes this one ball, Tony, there's a good argument that Wojtek should have taken that one ball on. Sometimes you can be overcautious. It does go, look. It sure does. Well, I Someone think mentioned we need a channel for Tony's tips. And it says... Uh, well, the you've name got says, one, haven't you? The name says Robles. I'm wondering if that's my son, Jonathan, from New York. Is it you, Jonathan? I don't know. <laughs> because he's supposed to be helping me uh, put a, you know, some, some content together. So if, you, if, I, if I can have everyone go to Facebook and subscribe to my channel, I will be releasing some new content within the next couple of months with the help of my wonderful son, Jonathan Robles, in New York. So well on the way to clawing one back. I mean, I, I think you have to agree, both both players really have the uh, speed of the table down. Yeah. It's turning into a great final.
And a drawback for the nine. Easy stop shot here mm -hmm. for the ten. Or maybe just run it off the rail. When we come back from this break, there will be George Teoshea in the booth with Tony Robles to finish this final off for you. I'm going to go and watch it from the stands. See you soon. Thank you, Mark. And we are back to the live action. Christopher Devis to break, trailing by a game. Took down the last one to break a four game streak by Wojcik. Cue ball is the ball he had not made on the break until now. I don't think I'd seen him scratch in his last match or this one. Yeah, I mean, that's the first that I can remember. Yeah. Big break for Wojcik as they got a little close there within a game. He won the first game but lost the next three, but then he ripped off four games in a row. Welcome to everyone in the stream and on Billiard TV. What a great match you guys have been viewing. Some pretty hot semifinals, and now a great final. Yeah, oh yeah, no, it's, 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 it's been, been amazing. Great. It's, it's been, been amazing, amazing. Some past two weeks, George, and it's just always an honor to do commentary with you, Mark. I enjoy it to no end, I really do. Likewise, Tony, we, we like having you in here for your expert um, commentary, and you tell us what to do and how to do it. It's gonna get perfect in the side. Four balls over a pocket. Yeah, I mean, he can just go two rails here and stop between the seven and the nine, or he can go three rails and go past the six and stop between the seven and the nine. Either way, he's good. Mm. I think I like the three rail option. So do I. Because he can just come off, the, come off the rail where his elbow is and just beat the seven by just a little. Kind of like that. Yep, there you go. And even if he doesn't end up straight on the four, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, he might have to elevate the cue a bit because of the six, but yeah, he's he doesn't have so much angle where he can't play position on the five. Now, Tony, right here on this shot, would you, can you hold this up with inside or do you go around yes. the 10? Yes. If he had more angle, if he had more angle, maybe he likes playing in the same pocket. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that because he has so much room there. Yeah, just like this. But he's going to play in the side, which surprised me. More, unless he underhit it, 
maybe he underhit it. Mm -hmm. Well, what I didn't like about going around the 10 is it comes back at a sharp angle and you're going across the line for position on the five. Yeah, because I, I'm pretty sure he tried to play the corner mm -hmm. there, George, because if he wanted to play the side, I think he would have hit it lower so that he can get closer to the lower ha left-hand corner pocket. Yeah. The only time you get closer to that corner, you, you stay within that range. Gotcha. Well, he's got a cut shot here, and he's got to play around the seven, but there's a side pocket above it, and uh, I'm not sure if he can hold he it can beneath it. just tap it. Just tap the nine ball there. Hit it dead square and stop the nine ball. I mean, it's the cue ball with the nine ball. And if he can do that and just, you know, make sure he doesn't hit it so hard that the nine stops in front of the six, he's in good shape. Oh, I think he, you know what happened? He missed the ball, and I think that's why he, he missed the nine thick. ball. Yeah. yeah. He hit it. Well, and, uh, actually, if he uh, would have cut it more, he would have missed the nine ball by more. But, yeah, but that side pocket came up and jumped up, and we'll soon see these five balls run off by this young man. It should have a yep. tie ball game. Uh, the way he's been playing, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't run these off. I have a gentleman by the name of KS uh, that said that's time we close. It's time he's going to be closing. It's time we build a legendary place in New oh, York. Oh, really? In New York? That we've had a lot of very famous tournaments. Darren Appleton ran mm -hmm. his Whirlpool Series. And if that is true, and I did hear the same, that they are closing, that's very sad to hear. It is. Isn't that one of the Billy uh, the, Parlor that they filmed the Hustlers in? That's correct. Yeah. Correct. But thank you for that. It's a, It's been a tough business, especially with this COVID. It's put a lot of independent mm -hmm. businesses out of out. Well, this is to tie it five to five, five, George. Halfway there, and they're dead tied. And in the beginning of the match, I predicted it's going to be a very close match due to the fact that they both, both these players have broken the balls extremely well throughout mm -hmm. this event, which is I re what I really believe is, is the reason why they're still here. I, I totally agree. And, you know, the way they're stringing racks, and not that they're stringing them, but, you know, three in a row for Tevez, four in a row for Wojak. And now Tevis answers with two in a row to get to that five. What a match. Back and forth. They've had a couple of missed balls, but that's about it, right? One or two apiece? Yeah. I know a lot of people here hoping for a Hill Hill thriller. I yeah. love Hill Hill matches. <laughs> I just, it's just, there's nothing like it. It's a $20,000 swing. It sure is. Let's play one rack for twenty thousand dollars. I know that's pretty strong, but <laughs> at the same time, when you really think, sixty for first and forty for second, that's what they paid for the U.S. Open that's for the years. That's it's the still unbelievable. That is the highest money I've been involved with, and I have it all in my room, and um, I think I might take off to my room now. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for uh, subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate the support, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about uh, releasing some new content, again, with the help of my, my awesome son, Jonathan Robles. So thank you again for uh, letting him know where they can find me, son. Three ball goes in the side pocket, and the one, seven, eight fight to go on the other, mm. and they all stay there. I wonder if he can make the eight. If he, he might be able to make the eight. He should be able to make the eight if he, he hits a one. Little jump shot. Well, he, no, he's going to jump. He's going to jump the ball. I'm just trying to figure out, is he going to go rail first so that he can cut the one into the eight? You know, I, I didn't know if, if the eight was, you know, lined up straight enough to the outside of the pocket where he can still make it, and I think it is. It looks like it yeah. is. Yeah. But actually, what you suggested is, is spot on. Uh, if he hits the, uh, the rail just before the one, the seven is going to stop it. the one. Yeah. Just a matter of can you keep it on the table. And he does it nice and soft. And look at this. Nice results. And he's looking good to take this for that lead. All important. You want to have a lead going into the back half of this match, mm -hmm. of your match, any time.
It's like I said, they, they, these players, both of them, have the speed of the table down pat. I mean, he hit that firm, but he hit it with stun follow, a little bit of left, and he was able to manage it, or to manage to get just the proper angle in the two to play the four in the side. You know, uh, Tevis played in the Alpha. Did you talk about that already with the Alpha Las Vegas Open? Yeah. Well, okay. um, uh, I, I didn't give anyone any facts. We were waiting for you to come oh, on okay. so you can let us know. <laughs> so please let, well, let the viewers know. He defeated David Alcaide at 10 to 5, Carlo Beato 10 to 8, and Beato had him down 5 0. I remember that. That's quite yeah. the impressive comeback. That's right. And then he defeated Darren Appleton, who played very well, 10 to 3. He, he was beat, beaten in the final 64 by Yu Lung Chang from China. Hmm. He's going to have to hit this, if he can, to the left side of the pocket, cheat the pocket a bit so he can get a little more speed on the cue ball and change the angle coming off the rail a bit. So that way, because if he hits it to the right side of the pocket, he's going to draw in a straighter line and he'll run mm -hmm. right into that six. Yep, he hit it to that side of the pocket oh, cleanly. Yeah. yeah, cleanly in. That's a good tips on using the pocket to gain an angle. That's correct. And it wasn't just to gain an angle. Yeah, you, to gain an angle to avoid running into the six right. ball, right? Straight up. Looks like he's going. Oh, he's a little outside to make sure he came straight up. This could hurt him. No, the speed's just right. Look how yeah. good his speed it's is. Like I said, they both got the speed down. Yeah. I thought he was going to come and get behind that nine ball when I saw that tracking. They're both hungry, George. They're both hungry for well, this title. That's one of the things you have to say to youth, but, you know, let's see, uh, Tevis is 31, Bocek is 27. Uh, Tevis just defeated Shaw, who was 33. Wojcik defeated Kachi, who was 23. So mm -hmm. uh, they're right in that range where I think a pool player, uh, oh, careful. Ooh. Yeah, I, I always make sure that I come <laughs> above the side pocket on that shot. And I think that's what he wanted to do. I think he just yeah. misjudged it there a bit, but I'm pretty sure he wanted to come above the side pocket. You never want to flirt with that side pocket just in case you happen, for that reason, just in case you, ha you happen mm -hmm. to overhit it. Yeah. So he should consider himself very fortunate not to have scratch in the side pocket there. Well, I totally agree with you. We'll go to a break and we'll talk about it.
And we are back live at the Predator World Ten Ball Arena here for this championship. 6-5, Tevis trails by one game but breaking the balls and with this break he could easily get back to tied. Let's see the air time for the cue ball when it hits a one ball. You see that? Perfect. Not much. That's why he makes balls on the break. I was discussing There's... that with Mark earlier. Okay. Because when you elevate the cue too much and the cue ball is hopping a lot before it reaches a one ball. If it catches a one ball while it's in the air, you're transferring part of that energy up in the air. So only part of that energy is hitting the one ball. Mm. But when it's flat on the table as it reaches a one, you get more, you're, you're literally transferring more of the energy. If you watch it next time, notice how he keeps that cue ball on the playing surface for the most part when he contacts the one. So his stroke is probably a little more level. Yep. Uh, parallel. His yep. cue stick is more parallel to the table than other players. Mm -hmm. Good point. And right there, he made both uh, both corner balls, four rails. Yeah. And what a great safety hit him with here. Mm -hmm. Gonna have to have the referee watch this one because he's shooting over the ball and trying to jump it. And he's coming down, so if he hits that two ball, oops. But it's a, it's a jump shot. These guys are just so good with this jump cue. Did he go the corner or the side? Because I think you would want to shoot this in the side, right? In the corner. Looks like he's aiming it to the side. Okay, if it's in the air, he could miss it easy. He could be in the air and just miss the cut. He tried the, he tried the side. He was trying the side. Is he going to get behind the oh, 10? Oh, wow, look at this. What a roll, roll here. What a roll. You ever hear of a you ever hear of a roll with extra butter? <laughs> That's what he just got. Uh, he just, Actually, he got a roll with extra butter he and just jelly. He just the baker and he got a baker's dozen. <laughs> is what he got. <laughs> you know, that's one of my favorite all-time names for a team: more rolls in the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long name. Baker's dozen. <laughs> Let's see if you can kick out of this. Oh, just missed. And that tap of the cue on the table was in appreciation of where the cue ball ended, saying, you got yeah. me with that one. Mm -hmm. And I like, I love shooting. The, if he can hit the 10 ball solidly enough to where he can stop the one ball there, that's such a great shot because now the 10 ball spotted and he has the room that he needs to play position from the one to the two. See, and then if he stops the cue ball, the two ball, he might end up dead straight in the side to just roll forward for the six. See, oh, I, what were you saying? I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I would have never thought to play the 10 ball there. I would have just gone for the run out the way it was. But I see your point now about position for the two ball because of the 10. It was much tighter. Mm-hmm. 
I would have tried to maneuver it around the uh, around the one nine to get position for the two ball. Yeah, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, by putting the ten there, now you kind of partially block the six two, but because he has a two and the three in prime position, prime position. to come back, exactly. that's why he didn't mind doing. Well, that. right now he's going to end up with a line straight to the side pocket and just follow down for the six, and he'll be fine. He's just got to make sure he, he uh, stops the cue ball immediately after he, when he hits the the two. Dead stop. Or just come off the barrel slightly. Just like there that. You know. Just like that. Very nice. Now he just follows it for the six. I believe he's on the right side. He kind of grimaced, so he might not. He's not on the right side. He's got a little bit of angle that tracks above the side pocket. Oh wow! So he drew it a li little yeah, bit too much. Yeah, that little bit that he moved. See, oh, he's gonna he's gonna spin this with a jump. Watch this. I, one of my favorite shots. I love this shot. See that? He got he got there. He got there, he got there, there because he could still go around. Sure. But that's, you know, I learned that shot from a guy who couldn't run two balls in a row. True story. <laughs> he did. came in my dad's pool room, uh -huh. and he asked three people to play, and they said no because he knew that he played poorly, and they weren't interested. And I said, look, come here, buddy. I'll play you a couple of games. And I, I, he was so terrible. I told him, look, why don't you take ball in hand every shot, and that'll be the spot I give you. He never ran two balls in a row. It, was, it really was terrible. But then at the end, at the end, corner when pocket. I, no. Oh, he's fine. At the end, when he, when we, when we got done, he said, "You know, I appreciate the fact that you were the only one that said yes to me to play. That I want to pass a shot on to you, that was shown to me by a friend who was a semi-pro. I cannot execute it, but I can set it up for you and tell you how he did it." Oh wow! And that's why that's I the that shot, shot right there. It's funny how it comes around, doesn't it? <laughs> he's pretty straight here, Tony. Yeah, yeah. I'm, Would you I mean, consider I'm, rail first? Absolutely. If if it's going to get me position on the eight, yes. Because if you if you just roll it, you have nothing. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Did he hit it hard enough for the corner? Yes. Yes, he did. Ooh. Barely. I might consider banking this instead of cutting it. Yeah. Someone in the chat is asking why. Why did they spot the 10 ball? Wasn't that a win? Not for the World 10 ball. No, this is for World. the U.S. Pro Billy Series, yes. Go ahead, George. Yeah, I was going to say, this is WPA rules. There's no early 10s and no 10 on the break. Mm -hmm. This is not the, yes, the Pro Billiard Series culminates uh, into this tournament by, you know, producing candidates for it or players for it with the points and stuff, but it's played by WPA rules. This is a world championship. The Pro Billiard Series is a U.S. and we actually have it in Austria. Mm -hmm. um, there's another country over there that's playing now with the same rules. And uh, wow. in Puerto Rico, we'll, we'll be there November, I believe it's November 14th through the 20th. Uh, the Pro Billiard Series will be in Michigan September 21st through the 24th. O Ohio, the 19th of October through the 22nd. Michigan will be $100,000 added, and Ohio will be $75,000 added. It's amazing. I'm, I'm so looking forward. I, I had the pleasure of playing in both events last year in Michigan and Ohio, and I'm so looking forward well, to doing it again. Uh, it, it really is exciting, but I did I didn't, I didn't misspeak. It's $75,000 in prize money and 100000 in prize money not added. Excuse gotcha. Me. Well, there you have it, folks. The layout for the Pro Billiard Series, but it's... Uh, WPA rules. You can go to WPA. Three rails. Yeah, three rails, perfect. In here. You can go to WPA.com and see the rankings um, and the rules for the world organization. Meanwhile, Wojcik is doing a good job of uh, trying to open up a lead right here on uh, Christopher Tevis. A Peruvian sensation that's just won over most of the fans, and the they just love good pool. So he's they give. Oh, oh. my, my! That's oh, the wow. first I missed shot we've seen. Did not expect that at all. Wow. Ooh. And he, you, you notice he took a little longer than he normally takes to shoot mm -hmm. that shot. And I mm -hmm. guess maybe he felt uncomfortable. Maybe he should have called the, the the extension and get up and start all over. I don't know. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell, but, to, yeah. but you know yourself as a player. You know if you feel you know uncomfortable, you you're supposed to get up. And you know, when it's something like that, like you just described, I call that discipline. The yeah. discipline to, to react. Yeah. 
Sometimes you just got to click that refresh button like you would on a computer, mm -hmm. you know, when the page doesn't load correctly. Now he's taking his time with this because he knows he just got a huge oh, man. break. It's like, it's, like it's, it's a tight ball game. Yeah. And the crowd wants that hill, hill, and game by <laughs> game exchange. Wow. That, uh, that was a surprising miss. But uh, the, the good thing about it is Wojcik will break. The bad thing about it is they're tied instead of a two game lead. Yep. There's a positive and a negative to just about everything on the pool table. And believe it's all your me, perspective. if you end up losing Hill Hill, you're always going to look back to that one ball well, you missed. Well, definitely. That's what hurts, yeah. It's a two-game swing. Yeah. So it's even bigger than, than the one ball you missed. It's a two-game swing. That's correct. Michaela Tab doing a fine job as our referee. It is so, it's such a pleasure to work with her. The first lady of pool. One of the greatest ever, in my opinion, mm -hmm. referees ever of all time. Always super professional. That she is. And com complete total way. sweetheart. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had the pleasure of meeting her in 2003 for the first time for the Moscone Cup, and we hit it off right away. She was just such a pleasure. Look at this break. I think he made two balls, five. So, yeah, he made two balls, one in the corner and one on the side. The ball behind the one ball went straight to the side pocket on the left, and the four railer went to the same side corner pocket. What's he do with this one ball? It won't go past the two or the four. Are we going to play safe behind the six, Tony? He might. Yeah, he might. If He can even bank it uh, cross side and, and try it. to, you know, yeah. like hit it with low left, center left, and try to spin it underneath the six and the mm -hmm. eight. And, you know, if he makes it, he can he can hit the two ball. Did he under hit this? Mm, I maybe. So. I don't know. Let's see. With the spin, it's going to move over a little bit. Yeah. yeah. No, he didn't. Yeah. The spin. See what that little English does? Oh, yeah. It added just a couple of inches that he needed to get safe there. That's why I always say English is speed. English equals speed. Without English, if you hit the rail, it kind of dies. With the English, it takes it. Oh, yeah, it definitely, definitely takes off a little more. Yeah. You know, with the side spin as opposed to because you have the, the ball spinning horizontally or diagonally as opposed to, you know, vertically. I'm surprised he's not two rail kicking this. Well, it looks like he, he can go with one. He's going to do it with all spin. That's a lot of spin for this. It's just not as accurate. Well, he's trying to put the cue ball behind the five and the ten. Look at that. Got a rail. And he, uh, I don't think he's left a shot. Oh, maybe. He, can he spin out of this with outside English and influence that ball in? Or is he no, I don't think so. Corner? I think he's yeah. going to have to play a safe. Uh, maybe he can hit it just thin enough where he not only comes off the one, but he comes off the ten. So that way the cue ball goes behind the five. Just like tap it really lightly, super soft. See, unfortunately, oh, unfortunately, he didn't hit the ten. I'm, mm -hmm. You know, I I, gotcha. I, I, I would go, I, I would have shot it to make sure I went off that ten because the ten is going to send it even further to that side. He yeah. he, he left him the entire left the entire ball. Dead open here. And now every game is so valuable here. You know, you don't have time to make them up now like you do early in the match. Watch the fundamentals here, how, how awesome it is. Just to live a section mm -hmm. in a perfectly straight line. Just looking at this five to see if it goes. I would just come over and shoot it up in the corner. Well, if it goes in the side, it makes sense of for course. him to just shoot a stop shot. He gets automatic position on the six. But, yes, I, I, I see your point. If, you, if it doesn't yeah. go, yeah, you definitely got to play it. Or well, even if it's tight. It has to be pretty tight, though, to where go. you can't even fit one, Mac, one half Mac one truck. One half a Mac truck. It looks like it, he can get it. But yeah, it's so tight. Gosh. He's looking to see exactly where he has to be for the six ball. Well, maybe he wants to move the ten and put it in a better position, but if he's going to do that, he better hit it good. I would just stop it there. I wouldn't flirt with that. 
Yes, See? he did. I think he did. Yeah. Because it's just such a small gap there. Yeah. Had he hit the 10, he had the right speed for it, too. And if he can come behind the 8, maybe he'll end up with enough angle to shoot the 8 and nudge the 10 just a little bit. You know, make your life easier, He shot, can move it. Right? Make your he, life easier, shot. Yeah. where you just nudge it just a bit to put it in front of the side. He can. Cue ball stops there. He might be able to hit it full enough, but I don't, I don't know if that's what he's going to do. Yeah, I think he's moving it right up in front of the pocket. Nope. Nope. He's just going to take what he's got. He's confident Take the enough. sure thing. Yeah, take the sure take thing. The sure thing. Just get straight on the 10 ball and shoot it in the lower right-hand corner. Mm, I think he's good, but I'm pretty sure he wanted to be straighter than that. He must be hitting that corner to come out. We'll be back. Back to the live action right here at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino at in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are in the Pro Arena in the back of the main ballroom. Christopher Tevis from Peru to break the balls, leading six, seven to six. They were tied at six, tied at five, tied at six. And he's a game ahead. Watch his break, folks. Seven ball tracks towards the pocket, didn't go in. The four railer goes. The Five wow. does not go as close, but he's got no shot on the one. The 10 ball is in the way. 
Do you know we have over 5,000 viewers for this final match? That's awesome. And that's just, and we're but on, yeah. only 308 likes. So please, 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 if you can, smash that like button. Is it my you deodorant? <laughs> no. Please smash that like button. And let's get that up at least to 500 within the next 10 minutes or so. We really appreciate it. It goes a long way. Thanks in advance. Please, guys, hit that like button. So I think he might have enough room to kick this in. If not, then he has to play safe. Leave the cue ball underneath the 10. He's going to have to hit it good. Would you slow roll kick this so you can roll onto the 10? Yeah, I, I wouldn't hit this hard. Mm -hmm. I would try to freeze it on the 10 if possible. Because, you know, the three is kind of like a bit of a blocker there, too. If he hits it just right to where the one ball goes below where the three is in the opposite side of the rail to make it tougher. I mean, not, not below, but, you know, close to parallel. Mm -hmm. If it goes below, then he can go behind, the, you know, in front of the right. three and then kick it one rail. How about a kick and stick from the left side? He can do that as well. Again, he has to hit it hard, but that, that's not a bad shot at all. He's going to the top. Oh. Fortunately, he hit it a little bit to mm -hmm. the side of the one. Well, the speed was good, so he didn't really leave a shot. I don't believe that cuts. Mm -hmm. If it does, he has a Ginzu knife. Someone asks, is this the WPA World Championship or is this a CSI event? This is a WPA World Championship. This is a Predator World 10 ball, the only world championship held in America. It is sanctioned by the WPA, so yes. it's an official WPA event. Look at this, look at this. He's, He's trying to get behind. hide him behind. Yeah. One of my favorite shots. I love yeah. playing that safety. Well, is that the tough shot? Back cut. There's no real good position on the three ball from here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's going to have to think gonna about play. this. He's going to call the six ball. Yeah, well, I'm, I think what he, he's really going to do is he's going to hit the long rail, short rail, and try to put the keyboard behind the three and the seven. That's what I would do. That's a good shot. See, look at behind the three and the seven, but he was hoping to stop this one ball there with the six, and he did not, unfortunately for him. Yep. Well, these seven, eight balls to tie it up. He'll have to play a combo on the four. Or like he just looked at, the three ball by the 10, mm -hmm. one or the other. A number of people have asked, wasn't it supposed to be a race to 11, or is it a no, race to 10? No, it was all a race to 10, every bit of it. There was, since it's a final stage and it's a single elimination, all the matches were mm -hmm. a race to 10, since it's not double elimination in the, in the mm -hmm. final stage. You made me check the little, <laughs> right above the score you'll see, race to 10. Did he get, oh, him? No. Did he get him in he, front of the eight or he, not? He was trying to, oh. he was trying to sl yeah. slide that cue ball up against the seven ball, hit that back rail and come up on top of it. He's left a shot, low percentage. This is a J Jason Shaw type shot. Where you elevate the stick and you come between the, the, the five and the six. Unless the five goes past the six. If the five goes past the six, then he doesn't really have to do anything special. Yeah, he's going to hang it up. Did he scratch? Yep. He scratched. Well, thanks so much to everyone. Uh, we uh, requested that they hit the smash, the smash the like button and get to 500, and they got to 500. Oh, in like awesome. Two minutes flat, so thank you. And <laughs> anyone else that hasn't... Smash it. Let's try to see if we can get to seven, maybe eight, maybe nine, a thousand. Well, a thousand would be awesome. Every bit helps. That would be awesome, yeah. So it looks like we might have a tied ball game again. Oh, you're kidding. From 5-5 five, five to 6-6 six, six <laughs> to 7-7, seven, seven, is that yeah. like tied? And the lead changes by one. Yeah, they rattled off some games in a row. I think Devis had three in a row. And then... Wojek had four in a row. Tevis won two to make it up. And then they've exchanged racks. 
and they'll continue to exchange racks, which means that Hill Hill, ah, it'll be right down to the nitty gritty, and one of the semifinals was Hill Hill, and the final can easily be Hill Hill. The way it's going, yes. Yeah. There's a good chance it might happen. Hope you guys have your heart pills. I know I have mine. <laughs> So my awesome son, Jonathan Robles, says we have 500 plus likes. Thank you to everyone and over 25 new subscribers to my channel. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, awesome. And, and to my boy, my boy. <laughs> That's my, my boy. boy yeah. Hooking you up. You ever watch anyone in the chat ever watch Tom and Jerry? You say, That's my boy. <laughs> with, with, the, with the father pup and the, the, the son pup. pup. I, with the, father, the, the, the dog, the dog. I it's think Spike so is long. his name. Yeah. It's been so long since I watched. Oh, yeah, yeah, the big <laughs> dog, the big uh, yeah. uh, English bulldog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is a tie 7-7. Seven, seven. Here we go. Are we going to be tied again? Yes, sir. What a final this has been. What a final this has been. We got the likes up to 644. Thank you all. Again, if you're still tuned in, we have how many viewers so far? At this point, 5600. 5600. Mm. Wow. 5.7k. Well, keep let's smash that subscribe button. Get it to 1000, please. Every little bit counts. Thank you so much. Lano Rivera, what's up, brother? Super close friend of mine uh, from New York. Just got a brand new table, putting some Predator cloth on it oh, with wow. some Arcos two balls. Just uh, beat his high run in straight pool the other day. What was the high run, Lionel? I think you told me about that. I think I overheard something about that. Uh, Lisa, I put the uh, I put in the description. I mean, I, in the comment there. Let me see. Let me put it again. Can you see it, Lisa? Whoa, check breaking the balls. It's right above your comment of what's Robles's channel. Thank you. All right, so let's see. Let's see if the one ball, all right, if the cue ball is on the playing surface as it reaches a one ball. Okay. It wasn't. Right, just a little bit. Just, just a, little a little bit, bit up, yeah. Now notice when he hits it, it looks like he hits it flatter. And so the ball. That's why he yeah. gets so much action, because well, all of the energy is literally being transferred to the mm -hmm. core of the rack in a direct line. Gotcha. I did notice that his cue was extremely parallel to the table. It was just really parallel to the table, mm -hmm. but when he came, when he when he pulled it back, he he raised up. Yeah. The back yeah. end. The back end raised up. I think he left him the side of the one boy. He's not too happy. Oh. Well. Left him more than the side of the yeah. one ball oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's gonna watch this carefully. This is a hard this is hard to call. Yeah. It's a hard call. If the cue, if the cue ball goes past the ten, it's a foul. Very nice. Oh perfectly played. Very nice. He took away that top rail. Mm. And the bottom rail has got three balls in his way. Yeah, he has an eight. He might be able to spin past the eight. The eight. I was looking a little at bit. Maybe not, not. Well, not really mm -hmm. spin. He doesn't even need to spin it. If he can get past it. Very, very little spin. He's kind of trying to follow the same angle and the same angle out. It's going to go in front of the eight, to the right of the eight. Just make sure that you avoid the nine at all costs. Wow, how good did he hit that, George? That was pretty good shot <laughs> there. Pretty darn good shot. Look what look at the that results. That was super he got. strong. Now you're gonna want to jump this and call the bank. Maybe he'll call the one on the side, go two rails and try to bring the cube underneath the ten ball. He's gonna go Oh one. look, one rail. Mm. He might be able to bring the cube underneath the ten ball if it doesn't go behind the two. 
think that's what he was trying to do. He wasn't trying to run into the two. I think he was trying to hit it a little thicker mm -hmm. and, and, you know, slow down the speed of the cue ball and put him underneath the 10. It's a billiard shot. Thanks again for subscribing, uh, everyone. We really appreciate that. Thanks for hitting the, the like button. And thanks again for the birthday wishes. You're a very thankful guy. <laughs> yep, I, I'm grateful. You are, that's I right. I really am. Attitude of gratitude. And Mocek has this good. Call the timeout. Very yeah. smart. Mocek is an 808 Fargo, and Tevis is a 761. Not anymore. Not after this no, tournament. No, after this tournament. No. <laughs> He's going to, I bet he, uh, mm, you know, I, the thing is, it all depends on his robustness. And I thought I saw it somewhere around 3,700 games. Uh, in which case, he'll probably Ooh. pick up four or five points. Yeah. But not much more than that. Although maybe more. I, I, it's hard to jump it. With that with that kind of robustness, it's hard to jump four points. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, all in all, he did play 800 speed or higher this well, tournament for sure. He beat... He wouldn't uh, be in the final unless he did. He beat Shaw, Beato. Let's take a look. Appleton. Al-Qaeda, all over 800. Actually, I'm not sure if, if um, Appleton's over 800. Now, let's see if he's going to play the combination here or if he's going to try to get, you know, take a chance and, 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 you know, play the five in the same pocket, which I would never do because you just have to hit it too perfect. You have the six yeah. and the nine here to contend with. Over here, you can at least control the five coming off the seven, coming off the rail a bit. If you draw the cue ball a bit so that way you draw it towards the center of the table, he should be fine here when mm -hmm. the five comes off the rail. You know, for such a fine billiard player, he plays ten rotation yeah. very simply. Yeah. He doesn't really try to mm -hmm. move the cue ball around. He doesn't really try to go for the three cushion shots. Yeah. Uh, his one he one rail kicks a lot instead of two rail kicks or three rail kicks. Mm -hmm. No, you're, you're right. And, and you know, it, I, I love the fact that it, it looks so simple when he's playing. He does. Makes you think if he's makes you think he's Filipino. It was a big miss there in that combination. You know, the funny thing about Fargo is that all during this tournament, the, the Alpha Las Vegas Open and this one, it goes into Fargo immediately since they're here and it gets calculated right away. I've seen a couple of jumps, like, uh, well, for instance, uh, Wojcik, someone just posted he's an 809, so if you figure him on Fargo right now, it's an 809. The Fargo I'm using is what was listed on the players list. Devis, I just ran through today because it wasn't on the players list. Was yes, it? Yes, it was. Seven, it was 760 on the players list. Okay. Look how great he hit that ball. Taking the lead, and this is where it's all important because this really puts the heat on the other player. Been looking for the Polish team all this time, and I don't see them in the stands. I can't seem to find them. They all want to listen to your commentary. <laughs> We'll go to a timeout after these two balls, and we'll run some commercials to try to make that $60,000 to pay the winner. <laughs> We're still short. <laughs> nice shoot.
back here. And Tevis to break the balls. Trailing by a game. The all-important Hill game if Wojcik wins it. And tie it up at eight. Oh, they fought to go in wow. and he broke try. Did he break that? No, no, no. no he made two balls on the break. Does he have a shot on yeah. the one? Yes, he does. Why is he upset? He thought he. I think he thought the five got in the way, but I think he can see the. I think he can see the one. Well, if he can't, it shouldn't be that difficult of a jump. But there's no position for the three. It doesn't go by the six. His cue ball goes uh, on the break, Tony. His cue ball goes just above the side pocket every time, right mm -hmm. about a diamond up. See, now he's, oh, he can see the three. He can see it all. If it goes by the six, he can make it. He might be able to slide it. I'm not sure if he can make it, George. No, I don't, he, think he can. I don't think he can. I don't think, I he think can. he's going to have to f soft follow this and, you know, come off the long rail, maybe the point of the corner pocket, and freeze the cue ball to the six. He doesn't want to leave it in front of the pocket because, you know, that's a hanger for players at yes. this level. Yes. Main thing is I think it's, a, oh, he's going to go behind the eight? Um, the, oh, he's going to go behind the four. Four, ten. Crafty little shot there. I like that. And he, I think he got there with it. Yeah. Well, what I like about that is that he blocked the long rail. So he's kind of forcing him to go bottom rail, two rails, to hit the three. Now, if he happens to hit the second rail and hit that three dead square, three has a chance to hit the top rail and come underneath the four if he hits it with the mm -hmm. right speed. Mm -hmm. That's what I would try to play. Just make sure you don't hit that uh, six ball, of course. But mm -hmm. he's coming two rails. Looks a little Close tight. Extension. Looks like he's aiming it a little tight. Out of the corner. Yeah, he's aiming right at the at the very corner. Oh, he opened ooh, it up. Yeah, he hit the six. Ooh, 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 yeah. That's a foul there. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. Yeah, I could tell, you know, where he was aiming looked a little tight. And then at the very end, it looked like it opened up. It's going to need to get pretty good on this uh, four ball. You know, not super hard, but pretty good to come back for the 5 8 combo. Yeah, that 5-8 combo, he's, if he gets good on it, he should do very well with this. Well, I guess he fancies uh, the 5 ball in the corner. Unless he can draw between the 9 and the 10. He can. I think the combo is the way to go. So does he. And that's how close you want to get to that combo. Now this is lined up perfect. I mean, that's where you would set with the ball in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once the eight stops there, and now he's in prime position to just shoot a stop shot, come off the rail a bit maybe with a little draw for the nine ball. What a treat we are enjoying here. <laughs> what a yeah. match. It's all you would, you would hope to get from a final match, right? Mm -hmm. oh, wow. A match worthy of a world championship title. This is every bit worthy. Got a lot I, of people here cheering for, for, for. I don't need to say a word. The crowd yeah. says it for <laughs> yeah. you. Are they happy? Oh yeah, no, there are a lot of people here cheering for Christopher. I mean, it's just, it's just you know, but. I wanted a great match. I said it from the very beginning. I know this is going to be a pretty close match, mm -hmm. and sure enough, it is. Even if it doesn't go hill hill, it's it's pretty close to that. It's about as close as you can get. Well, the one thing about being tied is Wojcik will get the break. He won the lag. Now, how important is that lag? Mm -hmm. They're both breaking well.
they're both playing well. We've seen maybe two missed shots. Maybe a little more, because I think there was one just recently. But nice tactical battle. A little bit of everything in this match. For Wojtek, nice shot of him there. Wojtek um, had a hell of a two weeks. Mm -hmm. He finished, what, third or fourth in the, the Las Vegas Open? He finished in the final. This oh, Ooh. cue ball. Oh, it's oh. going to drop. Oh, wow. Wow, this is bad. This is bad. Well, the five balls tied up. I mean, the, the, four, the four. four is in a bad spot, but I'm just saying if he runs out here, he's breaking for the win. Would you consider pushing that uh, uh, the one ball down by those balls to open them up and playing a safe here with the cue ball? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, if I feel that I cannot run, then I'm going to, before I even take the first shot, mm -hmm. I'm going to decide which ball am I going to play safe on. Is it going to be the one to break him up a bit, or is it going to be the one, two, three, and maybe shoot the four and then freeze the cue ball behind the five? You know, he has to make that decision before he shoots. And I would take my time here if I were him because you have 60 seconds before you even, I mean, when you get to the table for the first time after the break, and then you have an extension after that. Mm -hmm. So let's see, oh, oh, oh. He definitely didn't oh, want to do that. Oh, didn't want to do that. Now he's going to play safe for sure. I wonder if he can follow the cue one between the five and the ten and just spin it behind one or the other. He can use the ten to get behind the five. Or he tried to put him. That. He tried to put him in a spot where he couldn't even hit the two ball. If he would have put that two ball perfectly on that five. Between the five and the ten, he wouldn't. Be, well, he might have been able to hit if he went the long mm -hmm. rail, but it's tougher. He's looking to see how he can escape the four ball with the cue ball. <coughs> All right, Mike, check just inform us that we're almost at 800 likes. So please smash that like button. Wow. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that, buddy. Well, let's see this thin cut on this ball here. Well, he needs to get the cue ball out of there. And he did. Look how good he hit that one. And look where wow. it's going. Look at this wow. shot. See, I didn't think he can get past the four, but man, did he hit that I, good. I didn't either. That's why yeah. I said he's looking to see how he can come off the four ball. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a pure joy watching these two, two players get to this point. Oh, no. Wow. He is not going to be He's happy with that. Not happy, yeah. The only saving grace here for him would be that four ball. Well, the Polish player, Wojciech. Chefshek with ball in hand, tied at eight in a race to ten. Four balls in a tricky place. Do you think that he's thinking of banking the two ball to the four and leaving the cue ball on the nine? Because that's what it looks like he's he's planning here. He's I, can't, I can't tell. He's Unless he just he just wants to just play him, leave him behind the nine. Well, he didn't get it yeah. up to where he can break it out. He's thinking of three fouling him. Yeah. Well, I mean. Uh, or at Moving least the eight ball there yeah, didn't help the four balls case if you wanted to shoot it in the lower left hand. I wouldn't shoot it there anyway. He called this pretty quick. One rail, he's gonna one rail at the right at the two. Yeah, I think he was hoping to not leave him a kick at all. Oh wow. Well now, I tell you why, he's gonna put him underneath the eight here. If he puts him underneath underneath the eight and he freezes him, he might be in some pretty serious trouble here. This will be the first three foul I've seen this tournament. Or even heard about this tournament. He's going to want to really use Loctite here. Put him right up against this eight ball. He's moving the four so that he can have a run out, even if yeah, he makes a good hit. He wants to make sure that he throws him on that eight ball. See, oh man, he, this is a hell, that's a hell of a safe because he put the two ball in such a bad spot that if he hits underneath the two, he's going to scratch on the side. Yeah. He's on two. 
This is also kickable. He might be able to kick it in. Like I and said, that's, you just, you like just I called said, it. if he hits underneath that two ball, and, and, and I, I think that's the first one I've seen too. That's the first three foul I've seen. In fact, that's the first three foul I've seen in both yeah. tournaments. And let me tell you, that puts him on the hill. That puts him on the hill, and it's Christian's turn to break it's if I'm not mistaken. Christopher's break. So if he breaks away, he's been breaking this entire tournament, he should be on his way to a tying it hill hill. Yeah. If not, you're going to see Mr. Wojtek uh, take his time in the final rack. Look, you see him? He's trying to loosen himself up. Look at him. He knows it. He can feel it. <laughs> I told you, both players are hungry. Both players are hungry. Well, one of my favorite question is things. which one is hungrier? I think the gentleman at the table, they're both. Wow. Look at How the did ball. he hit that? Oh, my God. He hit that <laughs> like I know I'm going to tie Hill Hill. But look, unfortunately, <laughs> he didn't end up with an easy shot on the one ball. I thought you were going to say he hit it like he stole something from him. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's I, I usually <laughs> use that one, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that. He stole something from him. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he goes for the one ball, there's no position on the two. He goes I wonder if he's going to put him underneath. You the, need the, the two, two nine. nine six or Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. speed. Speed has got to yeah. hit the nine. And Whoa, hit that. nice shot. I think he left him enough to spin it. Yes. See, he was hoping to put him underneath the nine, so he forces him to go, you know, downtown and uptown to come and hit the one, but no, he didn't. Yeah, he was trying to put him right on top of the nine. He can actually nice. separate them now. He shoots to hit half of the ball, even a quarter of the ball, coming off that rail, and he's going to separate the one in the cue sure. ball. He's going to using send those the... balls as blockers. Yeah. Yes, you got it. Good call. Super quiet here. How good did he hit it, George? Oh. How good did he hit it? He hit it like someone who's determined to win a world championship. Yes. But Mr. Tevez also hit the previous safe like someone who wants to win a world right. championship. I and told we'll, you, they're both hungry. They're both hungry. Let's take a look at this shot because this is a makeable kick. Did he call it? If he didn't, oh. he would be mm. absolutely crazy. Well, I'll tell you what. I think he's going to pocket the one ball here and turn into a locksmith and play a safe on a two ball. See, if the three weren't in the way, then I would. I can see him shooting the one, hitting the nine out of the way, and playing mm -hmm. position for the two in the same pocket. But I think he's going he's gonna to play safe on the two. That's a move. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. He hit a little too soft, I think. Well, he also has a good combo. Yeah, yeah he's straight. Why in. not? If he can, if that combo is lined up dead straight, I wouldn't blame him for going for it. No. You know, I was telling Mark or you, I don't remember who it was, that sometimes when you give your opponent that one extra inning, that one extra inning is all it takes for them, your opponent to get lucky. Well, we saw Shaw. There it is. Yeah. We saw Shaw kick in two shots in previous matches mm -hmm. that looked like a jam up safety. Yeah. Yep. See and what I did there with the jam up apparel that you're wearing? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well if he hits if he hits this with low and hits that six on the thick side to stop the cue stop ball it. there. It's great exactly. because not only is he stopping for position, he's sending the six ball on the same side of the table as a five, which makes it easier to play position. See, now, now it's not going to be difficult to play dead on the six at all. Yeah. And See, it's some all people open. would hit that soft. And, you know, if, if, if for, for players that are not, not as experienced, right. and they hit it soft, and the six stops in front of the eight, so you got to work a little extra hard on the five to get to the six. Not that it's impossible, yep. it's just a little more difficult, that's all. 
But this is for the world championship. This is right for the here. world. These four balls deal. for the world championship. Pero que viene a jugar ustedes. They both played absolutely tremendous and definitely deserve to be in the final. And both players deserve this. It's so a shame one of them has to lose. Exactly. What would you think the odds are of getting out here? I, I think he's I think he's got this. I mean, he's going to end up with an angle in the eight. Where once you come off that rail, you're going right towards that ten. So that speed isn't going to matter that much at all. He's got. He's going to go right angle. towards that ten yep. ball. Going to drive this towards the side pocket on the right. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Low right. And you know, just in case we don't get a chance to say, it, we w truly want to thank everyone who's tuned in and everyone for their comments. We pre appreciate each and every single one of you and for your support. Uh, we wouldn't be here without you. So thank you so much for everything. It's been a great five days, folks, having you here. This is it watching, right here. This watching right what we here. do. It's a life-changing shot right here. This is a $20,000 shot. 60 for first and 40 for second. How would you like to be shooting a 10 ball that's worth 20000 I think I'd faint. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Yeah! Our new 2022 Predator World 10 Ball Champion. Wojcik Chefchev. From Christopher Poland. Davis. From Poland, yeah. Congratulations Davis to Christ from Peru. Yeah, I mean, congratulations to both players on a well-played tournament. Uh, it's been amazing. Again, wow, look at look at the emotion. Look, he's about to cry. I mean, this is really awesome to, to witness. This is huge. Good job, kid. From Good a job. I'm very champion, happy for him. From a junior champion to a world champion. Wow. Very well earned. Very well earned. Wow. I'm just so excited for him because I know what it's like to win your first major tournament, but I mean, this is this is a world championship. It's, it's un unbelievable. Hats off to Christopher Tevez from Peru. Ladies and gentlemen, nice round of applause for our runner-up, Mr. Christopher Tevez. All right. El campeón del mundo a la bola 10.
I welcome to the 2022 Predator World 10 Ball Championship Trophy Ceremony. We are hosted here in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino. First up, I'd like to announce our founding partners, Predator Group and Q Sports International for presenting this event. Our official partners for the event are Kamui Brands. Our official sponsors are Alpha Coin Cryptocurrency, the BCA Pool League, USA Pool League, and Omega Billiards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without our founding partners, our official partners, and our sponsors, this event would not happen. So please, one more time, can we hear it for our sponsors? We played on the best equipment. The Predator Apex nine foot pro tables, the Predator Arcadia reserve cloth, Predator Arcos two balls, and our Predator arena lights. The event was sanctioned by the WPA and the BCA and our title sponsor, Predator Q's. Once again, this is the Predator World 10 Ball Championship. First up, representing Q Sports International, the general manager, and presenting one of our third place bronze medals. Third place receives $20,000 and a bronze medal. Ms. Amy Kane. And our first recipient, Mr. Jason Shaw. And next up, presenting our other third place prize, which is also a prize of $20,000 and a bronze medal, representing the WPA, Mr. Shane Kyrie. And our third place finisher, Mr. Eklund Kachi. trophy and medal being presented and representing Q Sports International, Mr. Ozzy Reynolds. Yeah. And our second place finisher, Christopher Christopher Representing the Predator Group, Mr. Karim Bellage. And our first place finisher, our champion, who receives $60,000, a gold medal, and a championship trophy, is the right chick, Chef Chan. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we have a round of applause for all our players for this event, the 128 players that we started with and our sponsors for this event. And we 
thank you for being here, for being at the expo, and for watching this event. Once again, this was the Predator World 10 Ball Championship of 2022. And once again, our champion, White Chick Chef Chick! in February for the Predator World 10 Ball Championship of 2023. Good night, everybody.